Hi, this is Tanya Walker. You might know me from General Hospital or One Life to Live or several other things. But today I am on FaceTime with Todd Wharton. Stick around, we're gonna have some fun. Oh man, this is so good. Have you guys ever noticed that people are really sensitive during the holidays about their cookies? Merry Christmas, Schwarzenegger, Liz. Hi, I Ted. Yo, Anna, what's up, man? Mmm, man. Yo, your wife has got the tastiest cookies. But, uh, who told you you can eat my cookies? Oh, come on, man. It's the holidays. You know your wife's got enough cookies to go around. I need to speak to my wife. So could you get her on the phone, please? She's a little busy at the moment. Oh, man. Oh, these cookies are so good. Put that cookie down now. Is that Arnold on the phone? Yeah, it is. Did you tell him you ate my cookies? Yes, I did. <laughs> We'll be right back with actress Tanya Walker. Welcome back, everyone. So my guest tonight is an Emmy-nominated actress. You may have seen her in One Life to Live or maybe General Hospital. But you know what? Let's take a look at a clip. You can't trust her. She will leave here and go straight to the police. It doesn't matter. We'll be long gone. You don't know, Duke, the things I've done. The things I've done, the crimes I've committed to bring you back. I can't allow a witness. I'm sorry, my love. But Anna has to die. Please welcome to the show a great lady, Tommy Walker. Hey, I'm great. Thank you so much for having me, Todd. It was so nice to see you on your own show. Thank you. Yeah, it was so, and it's finally great to connect with you. Like, if people don't know, Tanya and I have been connected online. I like think six years? Six, seven years. Yeah. 89 years, 90 years, something like that. And it's just, yep. I always tell people, you never know who you're connected to because when people a lot of times connect, there's probably a synergy there. That's why somebody sends a friend request, right? But Well, I notice, I notice people who are go-getters. I notice people who are successful and who um, they just keep popping up in my, in my feed and different things. And I remember a long time ago, you were putting together um, networking events mm -hmm. and parties and things. And they were on the rooftop of some fabulous hotel or, or something like that. And, and you always invited me and I was always busy, but I always thought it was cool yeah. that who's this guy having this thing at this place for these, well, I'm glad I'm invited. I'm sorry I can't go, but I'm glad I'm invited. And I it continued, that. it continued. And it was really impressive to me that you that you did that. So, you know, here and there, I keep following you along and you've grown and grown and grown and grown. And now you have, now you have this. Yeah, this is great. And, and you're gonna be on Times Square. Yeah, there's a lot of things going on. I'll be honest, I do miss the- Times Square New Year's Eve. Yeah, Times Square New Year's Eve is, it's still kind of mind boggling to me because I grew up in New York. So watching the ball drop every year, I did Times Square once. It's cold. So it was like, yeah, we did it. But now being a part of it, it's just crazy to me. You know, it's like even with you, right? You love being an actress. You grew up, you were, you know, going to school, this and that training. And then one day you turn around and you're on TV with some great, great people. I mean, you work with, I, I believe you work with like Joan Collins and I mean, the list goes on and on, but that to me is mind boggling because we grew up watching TV. Like I said, yeah, we did. Watching we're, our the TV, we're the TV generation. Yeah. Mom would like put us, mothers put us in front of the television in the playpen and they cleaned the house. That's what they did. And they cooked the dinner and everything else. And I knew I was going to be on TV. I love TV. I grew up in front of TV. Now I have to make myself not watch TV. You know what I'm saying? It's terrible. Yeah. And it's hard about, I don't think COVID helped that part. <laughs> oh, that was the worst. And now I'm like a binger. I'm like a binger. What My daughter turned on Gilmore Girls two days ago. We watched Gilmore Girls for two days. Uh -huh. Two days. So and, and I'm like, oh my God, that's, that's the, that's the guy from This Is Us. Oh my God. That, you know, it's like all these people were on that show yeah. and I didn't know it because I had a, I had a stepdaughter that was watching Gilmore Girls and I guess it's the nineties. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah, yeah late nineties, I think it was. Yeah. Okay. And they're watching it. I'm not watching what they're watching. You know, I'm watching you know, 24 with my husband. Right. Yeah. Um, 
So now my do- my daughter, who's 23, is watching Gilmore Girls. Mm-hmm. And it's one of the funniest shows I've seen. And I said, God, this is so funny. This one girl in the show, this one character, she wa- was the funniest line I've heard in a long time. She walks by some some really annoying woman and and she goes get your tubes tied and she keeps going (laughs) sorry my eyebrows just automatically went up (laughs) holy cow what an insult i was like oh my god so then bella tells me that uh that that amy paladino writes a marvelous mrs Maisel. yeah well no wonder it's so hysterically funny I mean, it's line after line after line after line. It's fun. It's fast. It's fantastic. I mean, it's been on my television for days now. Yeah, and it's great. You know, it's, you know the one thing that was good about COVID, and it's kind of weird to say the one thing that was good about COVID, yeah. it actually made a lot of stars, right, that weren't, that weren't like, known like a Chris Helmsworth of today, right? Who's like- I have to decline these phone calls. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Decline. You should put them on and be like, hey, how you doing? Um, you don't know me, but, uh, can you hey, mom. Back? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, tell your dog, I'll speak to him in a minute too. We'll bring him on. Uh, no, but COVID actually did something really great, especially for a lot of actors. Um, there are a lot of actors out there that are, that are well known, but don't have the credibilities like a Chris Helmsworth. Or, you know, let's say a Holly Barry, stuff like that, are literally at the top of the game right now in Hollywood. That's right. Or Mel Streep. And what happened was because we were able to now sit down and watch a lot of these shows, you know, from the Vampire Diaries to the originals to the Gilmore Girls, you know, yeah, I'm saying it's Supergirl. I watched that too. And now you're starting to witness great actors and actresses from all different generations. And now that COVID's up, I think it actually added value to all the stars that we may have known, but actually never got to watch. That's right? true. Especially in soap operas. Okay. Because soap operas, there was a, there was an upside and a downside. The upside was a lot of the people that watched were definitely stay at home moms or dads that were only there during the day. And the majority of people that were out there nine to five never got to watch, you know, unless they put it on their quote unquote VCR or their, DVD, you know, back in the day. And now you're able to watch One Life to Live or General Hospital, catch up on the past and see all these great stars. And then people are like, oh my God, Tanya Walker. She was awesome. Oh my God, James Franco. I didn't know he was in this show. That's and right. I, and I interviewed Ronnie Marmo, who's a good friend of mine. So uh-huh. he's one of the actors. And I think it really gave a lot of value to a lot of artists where yeah. I think it pushed up your dollar. And now we're out of COVID right now. And I believe you're starting to really come back to work hardcore. You, you know, you're writing, you're doing comedy. So tell me about your experience coming out of COVID. So when we were coming out of COVID, um, my husband had just passed away and I'd moved out here and we had promised to take the kids to Europe. So um, it was going to be a push, but but I figured out how to do it. And I brought my kids to a, a hotel and, and we were trying to figure out where we we're going to live at the same time. We're trying to plan this little vacation and we're pretty much just trying to hold each other together, you know, because it was a huge, huge, huge loss. Mm-hmm. And um, we we're a really close family. So my girls were, tw- were at the time there was three years ago, Monday. So now they're 23 and 21. So they were in their teens. So we're staying in this um, motel and out here, you know, in in California, trying to figure out where we're going to live. And Bella gets up in the morning and tells me that I'm going to have to get three rooms everywhere we go on the cruise ship and in Europe and everywhere we go. And I'm like, three rooms? She goes, well, at least two. And I said, two? And she goes, yeah. She goes, Ma, you snore so bad. I mean, it's like a train. It's like a jet. It's like no one can sleep through that, Mom. Nobody, nobody. I said, your father never complained about a thing. And quite frankly, no one has ever complained about me in my entire life. Because he loved you. (laughs) She said, because he was half deaf is what she said. So 
anyway, so I go to one of these sleep places and they tell me about the CPAP machine, which I, I've got to do something else because I just can't. I mean, someday I started thinking someday and I mean, someday I might actually have intimate relations with somebody. Maybe someday again, I can't even think about it right now, but maybe right. someday. Of course. And I had this, this, this nightmare that, you know, that I finally fall for somebody and we were going to get serious and and then I'd be in bed and then I have to put this Hannibal Lecter mask over my face you know hi honey I'm oh my god so I thought well I'll do that marvelous Mrs. Maisel thing so so I'll get out of bed you know and I'll go sleep on the sofa with my huge machine and then I'll get up and I'll go back to bed all prettied up in the morning you know so I so I start thinking about how that would be and I started writing it down and so then I thought, well, then he'd probably get up in the morning and say, what a wonderful time we had. And he'd make breakfast for me and we'd have this wonderful breakfast. And I'd be so tired, about to die. Yes, it was wonderful. And so then he leaves and I'm like, oh, thank God that's over. That was fun. But my God, I'm so tired. And then the phone would ring and then he would say, oh, I had such a good time. I'm taking the sailboat out today. Let's do the same thing today as we did yesterday. And I thought, this is what dating is going to be like over 50. So I started writing about it and I've got a whole bunch of um, funny stories. And um, so that's what I've been doing. I mean, I've been on these, these sites. <sighs> Have you ever been on one of these sites? Oh uh, yeah. I've been on a, I've been on a few. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. Uh, you having trouble with navigating all the social media today. It's like so much, right? Somebody came, somebody told me that the, they showed me a picture, a real handsome serviceman, right? Right. Finally, I'm like, oh, I love the military. I'm a real patriot. I really admire people that serve their country and everything. Turned out that he was in Iraq and he wasn't an American. Oh, okay. And it was scary. Scary. Because he finally called and it was like really scary. And he'd sent me a second picture and then I compared the second picture to the first picture. And I'm like, this isn't the same guy. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's just like, ah! you know, and, and then they'll tell you they're, they're all 59. Oh yeah. They're, they're, and they're really like 82. I swear. <laughs> so, so I, so I, I, I just, I'm just really, I'm really rough in it. It's not, it's not, so it must not be God's will for me at this, at this particular moment. Yeah, I don't think, you know, there's a difference, gentlemen, of uh, almost being a member of AARP than being the founder. There's a difference. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, and, and it's like, it's, it's like, I'm not ready yet. I'm not, I'm not ready. I'm not even close to ready. Oh, I don't God. creak yet. I don't have yeah. creaky things happening. I don't want to be creaky. Oh, and then there's the, then there's the guys that are in their 50s that want to prove that they're 30. So they're doing triathlons and, and, and all these things. And they intimidate the crap out of me because I can't do that. I can't do all that, that physical no. stuff. I mean, I can do enough, but I can't, you know, yeah. I can't do an Ironman competition at this point. And I know I don't have any interest in it quite. And it's easy to do. I mean, my brother still does that. Listen, I exercise almost every day, but I yeah, don't do that that's nice. I don't do all that crazy stuff because at the end of the day, it's if I'm really going to exert myself, I'd rather get up out of bed and go run to the microwave and get my food out and then run back to my bed. <laughs> so I don't like want to miss a show, you know, like, oh, damn, commercial's up. <laughs> Got to run back. I got it. That's I the totally exertion I do. Now, speaking of um, uh, the military. Are, are my eyelashes on still? You, your eyelashes look great. They're sure. sharp your eyes. Yeah, they look great. You look a little funny. No, no, no. You look great. Okay. Thank okay. you for catching me earlier. No, not a problem. Not a problem. We already took You're that a good out. good man. Yeah. You're a good man, Todd. I'm trying to be. Um, first of Thank all, you. I'm 92. Um, you can find me <laughs> on Tinder. You know, um, you I'm telling you, these guys have pictures of themselves scuba diving, right? Then yeah. they have a picture of themselves parasailing. 
Then they have a picture of themselves mountain biking and in like up over in the woods and everything, and then skiing and climbing, you know, Kilimanjaro. And and I'm like, I'm exhausted just thinking about the whole thing. I just want to go out and watch a movie, have dinner, you know. Yeah, Maybe take a hike. Like, yeah, and then if and if you really like the guy, one day he'll be lucky to have Chinese food in bed and watch it. Wouldn't that be fun? That would be great. Maybe. By that time, I have, they've, they've got this new thing that you can get when you, you can get it installed. And if you start to snore, it, it does something and it keeps you from doing it. Right. So I'm getting that. So I don't have to wear the mask thing. Oh, okay. All right. Well, uh, it's about as big as a mouse for a computer. <laughs> and, and that sits outside the bed. Look, this is the best we got right now. Okay, this is the best we got. And yeah, then that mask you're talking about makes you sound like Darth Vader. It's like, well, that's what it seemed yeah. like it was going to be, and it scared the heck out of me. I don't want to be single forever. I mean, so, so they so they take this little thing and they put it in you, and then I guess you know when you start to make a noise, this I don't know, but it, it does something, and and you you don't you don't snore. Well, I'll let you know right now for you and all the ladies out there. I'm going to join the Tinder site then, but I'm going to do something really relieving. I'm going to show myself shopping in a supermarket buying food. I'm going to take a picture of myself in my underwear getting the mail. <laughs> I'm going to do the normal thing. So women are like, wow, this guy's like a real dude. Like, look at what he's doing. Okay, like, you really every day, do the underwear I have to go be a breath thing. of fresh air. <laughs> what? No, don't, please don't do the underwear get in the mail thing. Please don't be boxers, ladies. No tidy whities I don't do that. <laughs> They're gonna think you have a truck in your front driveway. I mean, in your lawn, not in your driveway. I figured I'll like get a an American car. picture. Like They're this guy's so real. They'll be like, it can't be a fake profile. Look at these pictures he's putting up. This is great. That's that's true. He looks like a lot of fun, and, and then you know, petting the dog and all that. But anyway, this is about you. Now, I did discover something that um, recently, which is awesome. Um, you were in the Miss uh, USA pageant, correct? When you were like 18 years old. Not recently, hon. No, no, no. I'm talking about two years ago. All right. When you were 18. Uh, no. um, back to tender. Uh, no. That's really, really, really cool. Um, what was your Decades ago. Like? I was a finalist in Miss USA, yeah. How was your experience when you did that? Was it... Uh, grueling or was it something fun because that seems like something that would be great but at the same time like uh there's a lot of competition well in miss you know usa pads and of course there is but before that i was miss teen all american and they opened it up to the whole country and like all the cities and all the counties there was more than 50 people and i won that and i i never um entered myself there was a woman who, who I babysat for right. and she entered me and I didn't know it. So I get this acceptance letter and I'm like, you've been accepted into the Miss Maryland teenager pageant. And I'm like, I didn't enter the Miss Maryland teenager pageant. Um, but for $275, you can be, you know, in this pageant. So I talked to my, my dad and he's like, you, you ought to do it. You want to be an actress. Maybe it'll help you. And the, the thing that was so funny is that I was called Fatso and Ten Ten Tanya and Godzilla and Frizz Head. And, you know, I was teased really badly when I was growing up. And uh, my heart just breaks for kids that go through that. Yeah. So when I got in junior high, I'd been on diets forever. And I'm from the South. Well, you look and good. Thank you. Well, yeah. I turned out all right. I just, <laughs> just went through a kind of a not so good period. But I tell you something, it kept me, um, I'll, I'll never think all that highly of me. You know, do, do you know what I mean? Like, I'll think yeah. the right thing, but not, I know it's a blessing because I know what it feels like when you're, when you don't look so hot Yeah. and how painful that can be. Mm -hmm. Um. So I never tease people. I never have in my whole life. I'd never, ever made fun of anybody because I, because I couldn't stand it. Yeah. I really couldn't stand it. Great. I mean, it just brings down the ego of somebody. I mean, we it all have our own unique. Cruel. It's just cruel. It's just cruel. So 
Anyway, so the funny thing was I end up winning this Miss Teen all I came in second runner up in Miss Maryland Teenager. And then they put me in the Miss Teen All-American pageant and told me I could win money, da 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 da, da. So I, I won the national one. So then I got to go to the Philippines. It was one of the prizes. Yeah. And um, my family, our vacation, we always thought we were rich because we never thought we were doing without anything. Right. But our vacations were we would drive to grandma's in West Virginia. And the biggest, one of the best vacations was going to a hotel. Like we lived in Hanover, Ohio, which is this big. Oh, yeah. And and you drive to Newark, Ohio, which is that big. And you get like a Howard Johnson's. Oh, Hojo's. Yeah. And you you stay, the family stays in, in a room and you lay by the pool. It's so much fun. You lay by the pool, you order room service. I mean, this is a vacation. Yeah. So then the one time we went someplace besides West Virginia, because we went to West Virginia every summer, every Easter, every Christmas. And I loved Huntington. We're from Huntington. And, and then my family, um, like Billy Ray Cyrus, I was raised around him because his dad was Ron Cyrus and his mom was Joan Cyrus, who was my second cousin. So we spent a lot of time on horses in Kentucky, that kind of thing. One time we go down to Virginia Beach, my mom and dad and me and my sisters, and it rained the whole time. And my dad said, this is the last vacation we're ever taking. Okay. So, now I'm, so now I'm 18 and I'm in the Philippines, you know, and we went through Tokyo. Wow. And I mean, I just got to have such a big life, yeah. you know. And after the Miss U, then I got in Miss USA, and then I was a finalist in Miss USA, and then I met Richard Klein, who was on Three's Company, which no yeah. one's ever heard. Of. Oh, you have? Thank God. Of course, I heard it. Well, one of the big. Well, I was with my daughter last night, and I said, "Oh, that guy used to be that. That's Mrs. Yeah. Cunningham on Happy yeah. Day. Come and knock on my door. Come on now. Yeah, go and knock on my door. So she says. So she says. Bella says, "I've never seen Happy Days." Because Mrs. Cunningham is on Gilmore Girls. Damn, you're making me sound old. <laughs> I can't believe she's never seen Happy Days. Uh. I'm like, oh, my God. So anyway, um, I came out to L.A. and I worked immediately. And it was amazing. His manager set me out for an audition. I had a Polaroid. I didn't even have an 8x10. And um, then I got a national commercial. And then I got another one. And then I got a series. And it just went on and on. But I always had this feeling like I didn't deserve it because I hadn't really studied acting the way I'd studied music. Right. And so when the pilot I did for a series didn't sell, Mm -hmm. um, I was on the road with Hoyt Axton, who was a country singer. And I just Mm -hmm. finished Gangster Chronicles with Michael Norrie for NBC. That was a mini series about the mob. That was really fun. But this pilot, I really thought it was going to go and it didn't. So when it didn't, I said, well, maybe I should do a soap opera. So after my manager and, and my agent wanted to flog me in the middle of the street, yeah, I, they're like, you don't do that. You, you don't do nighttime in films and then do daytime. And, you know, now looking back, they were correct. Yeah. But I was able to study with like the best teachers in mm-hmm. the world while yeah. I was in soap operas. And I learned a lot. And yeah. um and I'm not sorry. No. But um, I think that's a book. Isn't there a book called Not Sorry? There's something called Not Sorry. Anyway. Sure there is. Um, so, so anyway, I worked all the time. And then I sort of got not stuck in soap opera. I just was blessed to be in, in soap operas. Um, and I love developing a character for a long period of time like that. Mm-hmm. You know, my problem now is, you know, I left L.A., in 1990 to go to New York and I was there till 97 and I came out here for a minute and I met my husband who was from Cleveland. So then we went to Cleveland because I wanted to get married and have children. And he was it. Yeah. He was right. it. I fought it every step of the way and he wouldn't leave me alone. Thank you, God. So we went to Cleveland then we went to New York, went to Florida. We lived all over, had a great, big, huge, wonderful life. And, um, got involved with Liza Minnelli and David Guest and, and Michael McDonald and Michael Jackson and all these fun people that I was able to meet through David um, and then introduced to Ed and then Ed got to do his business. Everything was just beautiful, really fun, 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 huge times. Yeah. And then um, there were some really bad times too. Mm. You know, where we like lost everything and uh, I didn't know how that happened and, so anyway, so then we were, you know, we were back and uh, 
during which time I, I decided to make a movie and it was called the Derby Stallion. And I found this kid in 2005 named Zach Efron that nobody had really heard of. And I thought he was adorable and he had this great, you know, this great screening presence. And I loved Bill Cobbs. He was an African-American actor that's still kicking. Um, amazing. And I called my friends, Billy Moses and I dated for years. He was in it. My kids were in it. I was in it. It was great. Crystal Hunt. I'd love so many people. Michael Nardelli, just great people. Yeah. And um, so that movie made $5 million because High School Musical came out right after that. So yeah. God really smiled on me, you know? And um, so it's just, it's just, I wasn't working though. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's, these are my non-working yeah. years. Like, like, that's, like, that's why I wanted to start it. That's why I wanted to start a quick question with uh, the pageant because careers always start somewhere. And I'm loving how you just flowed because you literally just hit every question I was going to ask. And it, it's amazing. People always think success overnight, right? Overnight success. And I don't want them to know that you're started at a young age, but you kept moving. And I think one of the biggest success of your life is your family was always there with you in your mm -hmm. whole step, which was kind of cool. And uh, yeah, I think, it's well, awesome. the thing was, I had everything I wanted really by the time I was 37, except a husband and children. Mm -hmm. And I was willing to give it all up to have that. Yeah. And I did. But during that period of time, which was 21 years, yeah. I did shoot a movie. I did help um, produce a play on Broadway, which got nominated for a best play, Tony. Mm -hmm. um, I did a lot of philanthropic work through these people I was telling you about before. I did as much as I could for the cinema awards and, and the Actors Fund and that sort of thing, UCP, mm -hmm. um, a lot of Jewish organizations. Um, Ed was Jewish, so I liked to learn about that. And I loved all that part of that religion. And I loved giving back that way. And we did something called Partners for Potential, where if uh, children of color were getting, um, were being discriminated against or, or made to feel bad for being smart, we took them out of their school and put them into a, a private school if they wanted to go to a better school. We really tried to help people a lot. Mm -hmm. My husband was all about that. Um, but when he died, I was like, okay, now what, you know, nobody, I'm going to go to Hollywood. I haven't been there in 26 years. No one knows me. Right. <laughs> I mean, where is everybody? So, um, so I'm out here sort of reconnecting with people. I did get cast in designing women, which was amazing. Play, right? Yeah. Play. And I, play, I went to, right? I went to Fayetteville and I, I started to do that. I was going to replace Elaine Hendricks. Um, who was amazing. She's on Dynasty. Yeah. And I thought that was really going to kick it off. And then they decided that they wanted, um, they just didn't want to keep going with the show. I, I don't know what, what, what happened. So um, I came home from that and I was really bummed. And uh, I'm sure it'll come back. Sure. But I've just been writing my funny stories and, um, and, and I've got to get an agent. I've got to get a manager. I'm, you know, I'm trying to get my weight down. I should do something for women that are trying to get their weight down. You know, I'm still carrying my baby weight from when I was pregnant and my kids are 21 and 23. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's just, um, no, I'm, I've got 15 more, 15 more to go. 15 more. Um, you know, but, drop in a bucket, drop in a bucket. I know, but I bought us a house. We've, everybody's got a bedroom. Everybody's got a bathroom. Abby is going to be doing an internship at NBC. She's in Dallas. And nice. my friend Stephanie Lansdowne made that happen. Thank you. And her and God. Very cool. And Bella graduated from the American Academy of the Dramatic Arts and mm -hmm. another Antioch College. And so she's ready to go. But California still sort of shut down a little. Yeah, so, New York uh, is popping lately, just, just to let you know. New York's been what filming. What is? Everywhere. New York has been filming everywhere. Katie Holmes has we started. We may move filming. back. Katie Holmes has filmed literally right outside my house for three weeks on my block. They're, they're yeah, filming we everywhere. May, we may have to go back yeah. because this has just been hell. I mean, you know, I, in Palm Springs, they're still wearing masks into the car dealership. Yeah. I want to pick up my car. Do you have a mask? So it's just, 
you know, there's just, it's just really slow getting going here. Yeah, it's, um, it's a totally different grind. And I, I was telling people during COVID, you have to reevaluate, rebrand yourself. It's not the same anymore. Um, yeah. It's just not. It's, it's social media pretty much has taken over. It was there before COVID, but since COVID, social media really has taken over marketing. Well, taken I over. didn't like social media, so I boycotted social media. So I am desperate for followers at the real Tanya on Instagram. Hello. I follow, her. I follow her. I'm telling you, it's because uh, nobody's going to remember this. OJ Simpson's trial preempted One Life to Live. And that's what started this whole reality TV thing. Wow. Okay. That's crazy. So then they started having these reality shows with people that personally I didn't think were talented and they were taking our shows off the air to put on cheaper shows, you know, with no actors mm -hmm. and, I wasn't going to support that, you know, and I wasn't going to support people that could eat, you know, roaches in the middle of the jungle instead of putting on one life to live. You know, I just wasn't going to do it. I wasn't going to do it. But now I'm paying the price because I need followers. Yeah. And I didn't try because I didn't want to because I thought it was gross. And now I have to do it. So please, 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 please. <laughs> Yeah, of course. I mean, unfortunately, I, I mean, you and I grew up where we didn't have social media. So there was a blue collar grind that, you know, if you're doing great work, it's represented by your work. Now it's doesn't matter how great you are. Followers happen to be a thing and this is a thing. But when people work with me, I couldn't give two craps. Like, you know, me and you don't have a huge following. But when I spoke to you and I knew who you were, you're on the show right now, not because you got a million followers. You're on the show because you're a very interesting, beautiful person. And that's why I wanted you on the show. And that's Thanks. what should matter more in all industries than a number. Because a lot of these people that have numbers doesn't mean they're interesting. It, it just doesn't. Like you could do a stupid video and get 4 million followers. And the next thing you know, you're on the Tamron Hall show. You know, and that's I what know. media is right I, now. I know. That's what bothers me. You know, but I can't. It, it's not good to be an older person and be complaining about the younger generation and how they're doing things. I mean, that's what I want to do. Adapting. Yeah, it's adapting. But that's stupid because in order for me to survive and thrive in the future and now I've, I've got to embrace what they're doing and try to find some goodness in it and some way to fit into it in some way, because um, it's really hard for me. And my roommate is Kimberlyn Brown. She's, I got an apartment in, in Beverly Hills so I could go in there and work. Mm -hmm. So expensive. So, so she's sharing it with me. Mm -hmm. And um, she's like, Tanya, you know, you got to do hashtag bold and beautiful CBS. You got to do hashtag ABC. You got to do yeah. ABC, you got to do at, you know, and I'm like, oh my God. You should you know, have hired one of your daughters to do it for you, to be honest with you. you. Know, it's funny how kids are. <laughs> They'll do it for everybody else. Yeah. I mean, you know? unfortunately, listen, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to learn it. I mean, like I said, I, I think the coolest thing what you did was you took a tragedy and we all go through the same tragedies and we can't help it. It's just, it's part of life, right? And that's the one thing that we all hate. Life is amazing. Life is a gift, but then it gets right. So I think what you're doing is great, right? You have a family, you're looking out more for your daughters than anything else. And it really brings people together. And sometimes it really initiates, well, what do I want to do for the rest of my life? Do I, do I want to continue? How do I regrow? I have to adapt to what's going on right now. Social media says, how do I adapt? And I know you're going to figure it out. You're a businesswoman. You do real estate investments. You know, you're from Westport, Connecticut. You were doing stuff out there. And then you moved. You found your heart. You know, things happen. But you're going to find it again, whether it's okay. with your passion or with another guy. It doesn't matter. You already have a good head on your shoulders. You're going to find it, right? So now you, you just got to find somebody who's going to help you with social media. Because there are a lot of good there people out go. there. but. Get somebody who can refer you. Don't trust any of these people that hit you up online all the time because it's a lot of BS. 
Um, that's my opinion. Well, I am and, bringing the Derby Stallion back. I'm trying to bring the Derby Stallion back for families. Yeah, I would love it. Um, on, on something like Tubi or Flutie or whatever those things, I'm so sorry, are called, you know. Oh, uh, are you talking about Tubi, T-U-B-I. Yeah, and, and, and other things. I'm hoping that they'll take the movie. Yeah. Um, right now I'm getting all the elements together um, because it's still viable and it's still a wonderful family picture. And um, it's a horse, a boy and a horse. Yeah, I think Netflix would pick it up. I mean, like you said, Zach Efron's in it. He's a very popular actor, especially yeah. with the ladies. It's just so. got to be bumped up to um, this new, we've got to get it in the 2K, 4K. Yeah. You need a good marketing team to market it for you. That's what it comes down to. You need someone yeah. who's connected with a good marketing team to do it. I think you can do it. Hey, yeah. I would love to see you in New York. I mean, we have a different grind here. I love LA as well, but New York City has a toughness about us where there's a lot of work here. I think you may love it. You know the East Coast probably a lot better. So I, I lived there. I, I lived I, there for I, 11 years. You. Listen, I, I'll, I'll take you out to coffee. We'll, we'll grind it out. You don't have to meet me on Tinder. <laughs> Thank you. Better. Yeah, of course. Of course. I've never even tried. I think I'm way too old for Tinder. Oh my god. Uh, I think we're all way too old for Tinder. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, Tommy, but nobody introduces you to anybody anymore. Oh, uh, that's not true. You get you know what it is? It ha it happens to do with the circle that you're in, right? Um, well, the circle that I'm in, I'm in Palm Springs. Everybody's retired, so they're older. The people that are here that aren't retired are married and have families, and that's all fine. And I'm really just starting to think that I might be able to date anyway. So, I mean, it hasn't really been something I could do up till now. That's just something um, that will happen when you unexpect it. That's yeah. It comes down to. I just have to, I never thought I'd really have to work again. And I really do. So um, that's what I have to really work on right now. Yeah. And kidding. that's what we all are doing right now. There are a lot of actors right now, just like you, thousands that are working right now because things aren't going the way it can. And that's where all this came through. And I think you'll be fine. I think you're doing the right thing by you. I think, I, I think you're going to be great. Thank uh, you. Cool with that. Yeah, well, and, I may have to have a podcast and you'll have to be on it, hon. Oh, I would love to be on it. I would definitely, <laughs> I know you did a radio show. I could tell you're a great, great personality. I think you'd be Thanks. awesome. And I'm looking forward to having you back. I'm looking forward to meeting you here in New York when you come through. And uh, I'll be there for New Year's. I love all oh, you got to be at Finia. Well, I'm going to be in Times Square. So I'll see if I can get there. All right. Look for me. If not, you know, I'll, I'll be here in New York. But Tanya, it's been such a pleasure talking to you. I learned so much from you, and you're such a delight to have on the show. And thank you, uh, thank you for being on FaceTime with Todd Wharton. I really appreciate you. Everybody watch FaceTime with Todd Wharton. He's a great guy. You are really cool. Proud of me. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Tiny happy holidays. All right. Merry yeah, Christmas and good. happy Hanukkah and all that great stuff. Happy New Year. So, Tanya, thank you, first of all, for being a guest on FaceTime with Todd Warden. You have such great energy and such a beautiful heart. I can't wait to have you back. And I can't wait to see you here in New York because New York is where it's at. No diss on LA, but I love New York City. We love New York City. And I want to thank to my live, live audience for always watching FaceTime with Todd Warden. And stay tuned to our next show. But until then, happy holidays, have a great holiday season, and if you're not living a passionate life, then whose life do you live? Take care, everyone. I'll see you soon. He is the most interesting man in the world. I'm not always on YouTube, but when I am, I make sure I'm subscribed to FaceTime with Todd Warner. Be thirsty, my friends.